This is Jade. Not Jade. Not Jade. Jade. One of the indicators that a lot of people look for initially is bright green. And Jade runs just about every color of the rainbow. My husband Hunter just started carving jade, but we already know from selling Burmese A jade that so much jade on the market is either treated or just as commonly a simulant, such as quartz or serpentine. But what about rough material? Rough jade isn't treated, unlike many polished jade cabs and carvings, but there are imposters that can look like it. I have all of this rough here, but I need to know how to determine what is actually jade and what just looks like jade. Thankfully, I have a friend who can help me with this exact thing. Hey Shane, I'd love to get my hands on some rough material that pretends to be jade. Hey, yeah, I could probably hook you up. I've got a few minerals in mind that would fit the bill. Shane Zach owns Freshwater Jade, and he's a jade carver and a trustworthy supplier of rough jade. Everything he sells is legit. Nephrite Jade or Jadeite Jade. So these simulants that he sent me were just as a favor for this video. I was so excited when the pieces came in, but I didn't really know what I was looking at. So I had to call Shane for help. Like there's a there's a feel and there's a there's a luster to especially good jade. Like when I pick up a, a, a cobble of jade, like it's it's pretty obvious usually like what I'm holding. Here are some real jades. But what about these? Are any of these real? How can we tell? I mean, some of these really look like jade. Visual cues are your least determining factor. For me, honestly, like as someone who cuts stone just about every day, like the easiest test for me is to put it on the saw. I can take a piece of serpentine and put it on the saw and I'll know like that whether or not it's jade because it's gonna cut different. So wait, identifying rough jade is complicated? What? Yes. That's why Shane is going to explain these simulants and tell us about visual characteristics, such as fracture type, appearance under a pen light, etc., and hardness testing to look for indicators of which of these are jade and which are not. But as always, test to know best. None of the advice in this video is a substitute for proper gemological testing by a laboratory or extensive experience with handling these materials. People come in with their own bias, like you're holding a rock and you want it to be jade. There are only two gemstones that should be called jade in the US. Nephrite jade, which is more abundant and historically significant to China, is a combination of actinolite and tremolite and is the toughest gemstone in the world. And jadeite jade, which is more rare and has been more highly regarded in China since the 1700s, is a sodium aluminum silicate second in toughness to nephrite and has an incredible multi-thousand year history. In Meso America, which we discuss in some of our other videos on this channel. By the way, please like and subscribe and check out the links in our description. One of the ways to visually distinguish jadeite jade from nephrite jade is fracture type, which you might need a loop to examine. Jadeite, it's sugary. It's, it's got that granular texture. So pretty much anytime you, you know, if you were to hit it with a hammer and break a little piece off, you're going to get this very granular break pattern, this fracture pattern. And you'll, you'll even see, you know, if you were to take that in the sunlight um, or hold, hold the light up to it, you'll get these like little flashes from it, these like little sparkles, not over the whole face, but just intermittently because that's that's where like a crystal face is. Remember, jadeite and nephrite have many similar attributes. They can be a similar color. They're both very tough, meaning hard to break, and they are both real jade, but they are different minerals with different chemical compositions and internal structure. Nephrite, it's splintery, right? You know, nephrite is, it's often layered just like, um, just like a book. You know, it, it's got all these, these thin sheets and they're, they're packed together and some are packed a little tighter, some are a little looser, but when you, when you break that, you're gonna, you're gonna see those sheets often, um, or it'll be really splintery because of how fibrous the makeup of that stone is. Many gemstones have conchoidal fracture. Conchoidal meaning a smooth, rounded surface that resembles a shell. Jade does not. One of the things that is really important to look for, and I check for, like this is pretty much the first thing on my list, is a conchoidal fracture. So jaspers, agates, glass, right? Glass conchoidal fractures. Um, it's that 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 cleavage pattern that it's, it's smooth. It's the it's the type of cleavage that you're looking for um, when you're doing flint napping, right? Like making arrowheads. That's conchoidal fracture, and it it breaks off really sharp and shiny. Jade doesn't do that ever. So nephrite and jadeite jade are both gemologically jade. Grassular garnet, however, is not. But it may be accidentally sold 
as jade. Can you use a hardness test to distinguish grossular garnet from jade? What is a hardness test? This is a hardness kit, which compares resistance to scratching and can be used on rough and polished gemstones. While nephrite and jadeite are the toughest materials, meaning they're most resistant to breaking, diamond is the hardest meaning it's most resistant to scratching. The Mohs hardness scale is a 1 to 10 scale, where diamond is a 10, meaning it can scratch all minerals 10 and below, and talc is a 1, meaning everything above 1 can scratch talc. Nephrite jade is usually a 5 to 6 on the hardness scale, and jadeite is usually a 6 to 7, meaning they are both harder than steel, but can be scratched by harder minerals such as topaz, corundum, and diamond, and sometimes even garnet. As far as like the grossular goes, it's like a six and a half to a seven and a half hardness. That's one where you're still kind of falling within that range of nephrites and jadeites, right? Like that six and a half, like you can get nephrites and jadeites that are kind of around that hardness, but the, the grossular does get a little bit harder. And often I've found on the specimens that I've tested, they're sitting closer to like a seven. So that, that can be one way, you know, to, to differentiate it. But it does get tricky. And that is true of both the serpentine and the thulites. And this is why I think they end up in piles of jade sometimes, because like serpentine can be really, really soft. And oftentimes people associate serpentine as a soft stone, but that's not always the case. There are serpentines that do end up being in that kind of like five. I've even heard of it being around like a six. I haven't run into any that are that hard. But when you run into a serpentine that tests, that hardness tests at a five, you're like, well, is it Jade? I don't know. Like it can look like it and it can even be in that same hardness. So that's kind of when we get into some of those more specific testing methods because you're like, well, I this rock still doesn't scream jade. So hardness can be an indicator, but it isn't a completely reliable test on its own. Here is another mineral very commonly called jade on the market. What? is this. So that is thulite. It's a type of pink zoocyte. That particular specimen comes from Wyoming, and that's generally where they tend to come from, at least in the collections that I run across. And I, I've ran into it like more than I would like, you know, as, as I'm buying collections, like there's almost always a piece of of thulite labeled pink jade. It comes from the same area, more or less, that you're getting jade in Wyoming. And there's even jades that I have that have a ton of that pink thulite included in it. And it, it's beautiful. It looks really neat. Up next, we have serpentine. Serpentine is very commonly mistaken with jade in the rough, maybe more than any other mineral. In mounted jewelry, you'll see it too, especially posing as nephrite, usually beads. But I would say the most common jade simulant in jewelry is probably quartz. But serpentine's definitely up there. Serpentine, like that, like that piece you're holding, um, is going to be found really commonly in like both areas where nephrite and jadeite are found. Serpentine can be green, yellow, black. It can be found in the same specimens as jade and can be similar in hardness to nephrite as its Mohs rating is between a three and a six. You're looking for like different visual aspects initially. And serpentine, it's really glassy. When you have a, um, when you take your light to it, you're going to get a different translucency to it. And for me, I would describe serpentine as often looking very glassy, especially like the, the piece that I sent you that's a darker like black. That translucency, it really does have, you know, if you were to put a light to a dark piece of glass, you're going to get a, a similar thing going on. Whereas Nephrite doesn't have that glassy look to it, and neither does jadeite. You know, they're they're greasy, yeah. They're vitreous. They have a, a much different looking light penetration translucency going on. This yellow serpentine has kind of a soapy luster to it, and is a good example of a serpentine specimen that does not feel like jade, which might be hard to tell from a video, but it's very obvious in real life. Jade has a very distinct feel. Nephrite feels greasy and jadeite feels kind of glassy, whereas this almost feels like it has a residue. I have never come across nephrite myself that is totally yellow the whole way through like that. You actually, maybe you can see behind me, my finger is pointing at it. That's a piece of New Zealand jade right there. And the rind of it is yellow. It's bright yellow. It's iron stained. It's 
freaking beautiful. But the whole stone's not going to be like that because it didn't oxidize the whole way through. And that serpentine is yellow because yellow, right? This stone does not have the same luster as jade. It's not really the right color either. Softer stones don't take as high of a polish as jade. So this particular serpentine specimen, which has been tumbled, isn't shiny like jade would be. You pick that up and there are some, there are things about it that look like jade. Um, There is that kind of, you know, if you were to break that piece off, you're going to get that kind of splintery structure to it because it, it serpentine is a fibrous stone. Again, it might be really hard to tell without having had a lot of in-person experience handling jade. Moving on to actinolite. Actinolite and tremolite are the minerals that make up nephrite. Some tremolite, which we're not showing here today, is called mutton fat jade. The very highly valued white jade considered by some to be nephrite. You may have heard of actinolite before if you've seen cat's eye jade, which is usually chatoyant actinolite and is usually blue green or bright nephrite green. The reason that nephrite jade is so tough is because of interlocking fibers of actinolite and tremolite. So nephrite jade is tougher than actinolite or tremolite on its own. This is black actinolite, which looks just like black nephrite. But can you tell it's actinolite? In like a tumbled piece like that, it's going to be really hard. Um, The one thing that that black actinolite isn't going to do, at at least I haven't personally noticed, is any light penetration. Um, It is dark black and you can put a light to that thing all day and you're not really going to get any light penetration at all. You're not going to see that, that like really, that kind of like greasy green light coming through. Black nephrite is very desirable. I'm wearing a bracelet here from Golden Smoke that features Australian black nephrite beads and a sterling silver bullet. And it's gorgeous. Some people even consider Australian black nephrite to be the best black nephrite in the world. So where does this actinolite come from? It comes from one particular region in Australia. Australia does have true black nephrite jade as well. And it comes from a completely different area. They're very separate geographically. The outside rind and the crust, like when I get them in their rough form, they look very different. It's important that jade sellers sell actual jade. So customers need to shop with trusted sellers to ensure that they're not accidentally buying garnet, serpentine, or actinolite, and thinking it can be handled the same way or that it has the same value. For, for me, especially like as someone who works in only jade, that is, that is my specialty, that is all I'm selling. I need what I'm selling to be jade. It's going to work in a different way, especially from a jewelry and like gemstone cutter perspective and a carving perspective. Nephrite is prized because of how it carves and how it cuts. And, and the same with jadeite, right? You have a stone that's been revered for thousands of years because of its physical properties and how, how it cuts and how it carves and the way it looks. And when you have something like that actinolite, like it's close, it's similar, but it's not the same. And so for me, it's really important to differentiate those two. If someone sells you something as jade, like you're buying it because of those attributes. And if, it, if it's lacking in those, then you have something else and it shouldn't have been called jade. This imperial jasper from Mexico could be mistaken for jade. Another like really easy visual clue is that like agates and jaspers often have banding and jade doesn't do that. You can get really interesting like lines of color in jade, but it's it's happening differently. It's often when I notice it, it's coming in from the outside rind of the stone and it's weathering, right? You're getting rust staining or like some sort of like it's been sitting in a river for thousands of years and you get like these blue lines coming in or something. And that's different than the banding that you're seeing in that Jasper. What about this Antigorite? From what I understand about Antigorite, we're looking at a serpentine family rock. One thing you'll notice about that one right from the onset, it's super fibrous looking. You can kind of see on the outside an Ephrite sometimes. Like you're like, oh, fiber, right? We're looking for fibrous stone. Maybe this is. But one thing you're going to especially notice about Antigorite is that it is really glassy. We actually have a local Antigorite to where I'm from here in Wisconsin. It's found probably 40 minutes from me. And it's a beautiful stone. It's dark black. um, But you put a light to it and it's got this super glassy, dark green translucency. Really pretty, but super glassy. And it's a little bit softer. Nothing wrong with it as long as you're not looking for jade. (laughs) Let's take a close-up look at some of these real jades. 
Shane sent me Siberian nephrite jade from the Kara Noor deposit. This is tumbled Wyoming black nephrite jade. This is another piece of jade from Wyoming. It's also called Wyoming sage. Here is an example of Guatemalan omphacite, which is considered a jadeite jade. And I also have an Italian omphacite specimen that I bought from Shane. Here is Guatemalan blue jadeite in the rough. This is a piece of Burmese jadeite that I bought from Shane. You can visit his website by clicking the link in the description. Jade is actually quite hard to identify without sending the specimen into a lab for testing. A lot of advice online and even videos on YouTube will promise quick, easy ways to tell if jade is real, and those methods are usually not reliable, at least not on their own. It's important to examine as much jade as you can, to use multiple forms of testing when examining a specimen, and be discerning when shopping for jade by shopping with someone you trust. One of the methods for field identification that we didn't touch on today is specific gravity. I feel that that would have to be a separate video all on its own. The method that we use for identifying polished or cut jade is called infrared spectroscopy, which is essentially a type of laser. And gemological laboratories do offer those services to the public, as well as Mason K Jade in Colorado, which offers jadeite testing for authenticity and even valuing. Mm -hmm.